Today we will be discussing some of the mechanics of Spiral One's supercharged ramps. While they may seem convoluted at first, with a little bit of practice and a couple of key tips in mind, you too can exploit these ramps in order to get the most out of them for a speedrun or casual playthrough. Let's get into it. So here we are in Wizard Peak. Now here we are in the dance party version of Wizard Peak. If we look to our left here, you'll see the very first supercharged ramp of the level. I've drawn these three lines in order to show the different trajectories that Spyro can take when entering the supercharge ramp. Depending on how you enter the supercharge ramp, that will affect your end speed when you exit it. These differences may not be very clear at first, but when you start trying to do difficult supercharged jumps and wall bumps, it makes a world of difference to have that little bit of extra momentum. But before we get into those, just remember that the two key factors in maximizing your speed from a supercharged ramp are going to be your initial force upon touching the ramp and the amount of time you spent on the ramp itself. Since Spyro has more momentum charging downward out of the air than he does charging straight on the ground, this means it's objectively better to land on every supercharged ramp coming out of the air from a charge with full downward force. This force can be achieved by a charging jump, but is more consistent to achieve from a full hop, so that way you can really make sure you're charging from the air hard into the ground. Supercharged ramps preserve your momentum, so if you're coming out of the air from a charge, you need to make sure that you land on the earliest part of the ramp that you can so that way the ramp can have the maximum amount of time to increase your momentum from its preservation. So now, let's pivot over to jumping while supercharging. If there is one thing that you take away from this video, it is press X later than you think to jump with supercharge. Why? Well, the game registers your X input immediately, but it does not visually show the jump until several frames afterwards. These grueling moments can be the difference between whether you get a jump that bumps up to the ledge you need to go, or gets off the ramp at the time that you need it to without it getting cut off. And on that note, let's briefly examine the many infuriating ways that your supercharge can get cut off without letting go of square. You can, of course, get bonked on scenery and some enemies, but you can also get edge cancelled, skitter jump cancelled, and even just simply terrain flopped against your own will without any input error from yourself. Wall bumps are a particularly tricky but fun strat to play with once you get the hang of them. You must push up against the wall at around a 45 degree angle and turn away from it as you're climbing up it. Make sure you press X later than you think here because that's what's going to get you the extra height that you need in order to complete tricks like stone knot skip and the wizard peak bump. The last topic I want to touch on are supercharged turnarounds. These can be accomplished by neutral hopping over a supercharged ramp, which actually changes Spyro's mechanics so that you can get an extra boosted double jump similarly to Spyro 2. You can use this double jump to turn around on the ramp and land going backwards up the ramp to go to unintended places useful in the speedrun of this game. One curiosity about supercharged ramps is that they preserve Spyro's momentum if he were to move into a neutral state. This means that bonking against the wall, not moving, and then getting hit by an enemy will result in a crazy hit that pushes you super far away. Similarly, if you land in lava while supercharging and then press X to jump out, you'll notice Spyro has an extra long jump out of the water because he has so much momentum preserved already. So momentum from supercharging continues even after you let go of the supercharge. This can affect your movement post supercharging in a speedrun, so use it to your advantage, not your detriment. In certain areas, especially in Twilight Harbor, where there is a curb or a slightly raised ledge beside you when you're supercharging, you can push up against it at a harsh angle to get what we call an edge bump. These edge bumps get Spyro a ton of extra height, so play around with them. In conclusion, there's definitely more than meets the eye when it comes to these silly ramps with arrows on them. They change Spyro's very properties whether he's supercharging with them or not. And if you get used to them, then you can use them to your advantage and even get pretty consistent with them for speedrunning purposes. Just stick with it, keep playing around with them, and have fun with it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Damn.